Prompting is the new superpower. Business Insider asked top tech leaders, what's the one skill everyone needs right now? Their answer, prompt engineering, not coding, not data analysis, prompting. So let's be honest. How many times have we written prompts like, write an email responding to the below, summarize this in 200 words, or give me five ideas for a new project. And then we wonder why the output feels off, and too vague, too generic, or just plain unusable. But the top 1% of AI users and the ones getting consistently sharp, useful results take a different approach. So in this video, I'm breaking down the exact six step framework the top 1% use to get consistently better results. It's based on Google's own prompting system. And with one crucial addition, I'll show you how to give context without confusing the AI, how to define the exact output you need, and how to structure prompts that work immediately. I've added the free framework guide with examples in the description below, so you can start using it right away. So what's the secret? The best AI users don't treat prompts like casual questions. They give instructions, clear ones, structured ones, built to get the exact result they need. That's where the six part framework comes in. T-C-G-R-E-I, task, context, goal, references, evaluate, iterate, six steps, that completely transform how AI responds to you. It's adapted from Google's prompting guide and has the crucial addition of the goal state, which most people skip. And this is why many prompts underperform. So let's start off with the task. So the task is made up of the role, the action, and the format. And here we're asking, how should the AI perform the task? The role defines the AI's persona or identity for the task. The action specifies what the AI should do, and the format determines how the AI should deliver the task. So for the role, you could ask it to act as a career coach, a policy analyst, a teacher, or a product manager. For the action, you need to use verbs such as write, summarize, list, compare, or draft. And for the format, which is extremely important, you need to define the kind of output that you want. So you want the output in bullet points, or you want it in a table, or you want it 150 words, or you just want a structured outline. So as you can see here from the example, we've added the role, we've added the action, and we've also specified the format that we want it. In. So act as a career coach, list five networking strategies in bullet points for graduates. So let's look at how we would apply our example. So here I'm going to add my prompt to act as a career coach, list five high impact networking strategies in bullet points for recent graduates. And you can see that it will now start to give me the output in exactly the format that I want. It's concise. It's just listing the information and it's giving it back to me in bullet points. Okay. So step two is context. And this is so important. This is where you tell the AI what it needs to know to actually do the job well. Think of it like briefing someone at work. What background would they need to get this right? So here's what to include. Audience and who's going to read or use the output. Are they busy parents, business owners, senior top level executives that you're going to be presenting to? Also think about the platform. Where is this content going to appear? Is it in a newsletter? Is it on LinkedIn? Is it a classroom handout? Consider also the tone and the voice. Do I want it to come back with a casual response? Response, a formal one? Is it encouraging? Is it neutral? Is it an expert tone? And also consider the overall situation and background. Why is this being written? What's the context that we want to include? So let's see how we've built the context into our prompt with this example. And as you can see, as we go along, we'll be applying the previous parts of, of the framework in our prompt as well. So for the task, we've added the role, action, and format, which is act as a health and parenting advisor, write a short article on balancing screen time during exams, presenting supportive guidance with practical strategies in an engaging newsletter style. Now in the context, I'm now given information about the audience, the platform that's going to use the tone and the voice and the situation and background like we specified. So here I've said this article will appear in a parent newsletter, mostly read on mobile. The topic is about balancing screen time during exams. The tone should be supportive but practical. And then I've further broken it down. The audience are parents of school aged children, likely busy scanning quickly on phones. The platform is a parent newsletter. It's digital and it's mostly mobile readers. The tone and voice is supportive, but practical, reassuring, and not judgmental. And the situation or the background is parents are concerned about exam stress and how screen use affects study focus. And now you can see it's come back with an output. It's catered for that mobile screen reading, and it's given us the short to the point output that we want. 
So the next part of the framework is the goal. And while the task sets the action, the goal sets the purpose and the success criteria. And it answers questions such as, why are you doing this? And what does a good result look like? And here are some examples. The goal is to transform these messy research notes into a draft abstract that could be submitted to a peer review journal. Or the goal is to provide a quick reference one pager that a busy school principal can read in under three minutes. And this really makes a difference to your prompt because then it helps the AI understand what a good output will look like. Now let's move on to the fourth part of the framework, which is all about providing references. This step is where you actually show the model what good looks like. Think of it as giving the AI a style guide or a concrete example to follow. And this is actually a technique that is called few shot prompting. And the idea is simple. By providing past examples, you guide the model to mimic the tone, the structure or the style you want. So here are some examples of what to add to your prompt and the kind of references that you can attach. So we can say here's a past article that struck the right balance of informal and professional, use it as a style guide. And then I would upload the article with the style that I like, or mimic the structure of this McKinsey executive summary, show clear headings, short paragraphs, and a data-driven tone, or use this previous job post as a reference for tone and length, but adapt it to the health sector, or match the style of this nature journal abstract, precise, neutral, 200 words. And when you do that, you're actually giving the model a clear guide to follow in order to produce the exact results that you want. So before we go on to the fifth part of the framework, now let me give you a pro tip, which is how to avoid the lost in the middle problem. Most people don't realize when your prompt gets long, the model tends to ignore the middle section. It focuses the most on what's at the top and what's at the bottom. So if you bury your key info halfway through, it can literally get lost in the middle. Here's how to fix this. Use this structure every time you write a longer prompt. At the top, include your main task or instruction. In the middle, your detailed context, background notes or source excerpts. At the bottom, you must add your key reminders like audience and especially format. The model pays the most attention to the beginning and the end, so make sure you have your key info there. So for the next part of the framework, we're going to be evaluating the quality of the output produced. You'll be surprised at how many people skip this step. So don't just accept the first draft. You always need to ask, did it hit the tone? Did it miss anything? Would I use this as is? And here are some examples of what to add in the follow-up prompt when you come to evaluate the output. So you can say things like identify three weaknesses in your draft and suggest fixes, highlight which claims are strongest and which I should fact check manually, rate how closely this draft aligns with the requested task on a scale of one to 10. And if you are my manager, would you approve this draft as is? If not, what's missing? So let's see how this would work with a draft that we have. So for example, if I take the first one, okay, so I've already got an article that is produced here and I'm going to add this prompt to evaluate it, which is identify three weaknesses in the draft below and suggest fixes. And you can see that it's come back with the three weaknesses, unreliable exaggerated statistics, overgeneralization about adoption, unrealistic prediction. And then what you can do is rewrite the entire draft with these fixes integrated. Then you can use that to build on the output that has been given. Okay. And for the final part of the framework, you need to iterate. And this is all about making the output better. So prompting is never one and done. You always need to refine the output and make the AI show its thinking. So let's look at some examples of what we can use to iterate. So we can say score your own answer from 1 to 10 on accuracy, clarity and usefulness, then improve the lowest scoring area or rewrite this in three progressively better versions, explaining what changed in each one. And this is actually a really powerful one because what you will do is you will force it to really look at the output it's produced and then improve each version and show you where the weaknesses also lie. And then take Take your first draft and produce a polished version as if it were a final copy or generate an alternative draft that uses a completely different structural angle. So if we go back to the draft that we had, we have this online learning is the future of education and we use the first example. We're now asking it to score the answer below from 1 to 10 on accuracy, clarity and usefulness and then improve the lowest scoring area. And you can see that it's come back with an accuracy of 9 out of 10, clarity 9 out of 10 and then usefulness 8 out of 10. So the low scoring area is usefulness and now it's rewritten that version with more useful detail added. And this is really helpful when you want to pinpoint the areas in the text that need to be improved.
So to put everything from the framework together and to make sure you don't miss any of the six components, you can use a meta prompt. And this is a single instruction that you give the AI that tells it to build the full prompt for you step by step using the six parts of the framework. So I'm going to start off by pasting this meta prompt and I'm going to say you're a prompt engineer. Build me a complete prompt using the TCGREI framework based on my topic. And then I can insert my topic here and then it has the sections, which is the task the context, the goal state, the references, the evaluate and the iterate step. So assuming the topic that I want is writing a research paper on the impact of AI on healthcare diagnostics, and I've now requested for it to write my full prompt. So I'm going to enter that. And you can see that it's now come back with a detailed prompt that takes and takes into consideration each part of the framework. And then I can go through this and I can adapt it if it doesn't exactly meet my needs, but at least I have a full structure that I can follow. I can also attach the references that I want. And it's up to you whether you want to keep the evaluate and iterate steps within the first prompt or if you want to leave these two steps as a follow-up once you get the first output. Okay, let's put this framework into action using the TCGREI method. We start with the task act as a hiring lead at a fast growing tech startup, write a job description for a marketing lead with strengths in paid growth and team leadership under 400 words. Then we add the context it's for a company expanding into new international markets. The brand voice is informal, bold, and people first. The role reports directly to the CEO and works closely with product and sales teams. Next is the goal. Attract highly self-managing candidates who thrive in ambiguity, are data-driven, and balance creative brand building with analytical growth. Then we include a reference. Tone similar to Basecamp's job post, approachable but clear about expectations, and finally, the evaluate and iterate steps will come into play once the first draft is generated. That's where you review, refine, and make it even sharper. And the final product is a job description that sounds like your brand, and it attracts the kind of candidates you actually want. That's the power of turning a bland prompt into a complete one. Prompting is all about giving the right instructions. And when you use this framework, you'll spend a lot less time fixing your AI outputs and a lot more time getting results that actually work. I've added the free framework guide with examples in the description below so you can start using it right away. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll be sharing mini focus lessons on specific prompting techniques so you can master them one by one. And I'd love to hear from you. What's one thing you've done to improve your own prompt or something that's really worked for you? So hope you found this useful and I'll see you in the next one.